morning, everyone. It's lovely to be back here with you all, here in a place of worship, your place of worship. It's lovely to be back with you who are at home, in your home, which today and for this moment is your place of worship. I want to reflect on some of the words in Psalm 84, and particular two clear images two clear images. One, the nest of a swallow in the middle of a place of worship. And two, a road, the road that our lives become when God travels through us. How lovely it is to be in the place where God is worshipped. I remember when we were looking for a flat many years ago and we had to view almost every house and flat available at the low end of the Edinburgh property market. I think we went to visit 150 houses, well 149, before we actually bought our house or decided to bid for our house. And I do remember going into lots of houses and always wanting to be able to say something good about someone's home that you've gone into. I remember scraping at the bottom of the barrel and having to say to someone, oh, you've got some lovely, lovely plug sockets here. (laughs) How good it is to come into a house where you feel safe and warm and at home. Every human experience is in a place and at a particular time. It's part of being physical human beings that all our experiences are in place and time. And our memories are full of moments which are identified in a place and a time. And often these memories have little capsule thoughts, things that just stay with us always. In the psalm, it begins with a memory. The psalmist asking a question of where have I met God, where have I encountered God, and his memory tells him that he encountered God in the place where God is worshipped. For him, it was the temple, the huge edifice of courtyards and arches and, and gatherings of people right in the middle with this huge cube of gold covered stone where God's presence was recognized. We meet God and we remember over the years meeting God where we worship. This last 18 months has taught us that not only here in this building is the place that is stacked full of the memories of us meeting God and the expectation of when we come together that we meet God, This last 18 months has taught us that our homes can become places of worship where we meet God. For the psalmist, though, the place he met God was the temple. But what is curious is he doesn't pick out the architecture as the key place for him. He picks out a tiny corner where he sees a swallow build its nest, raise its young. I love the image of the nest as the place where we meet God, as a place of worship, as a safe place, a place where we are nurtured and we grow from the the egg-like beginnings of faith, the egg-like beginnings of our sense of who we are, grows until it becomes fledged and can fly. When I was young, we lived in a house that had a beautiful gable wall in which a a flock, well, a family of house martins made its nest. I love the thought that house martins and swallows travel thousands of miles in order to get to my house, to build a nest in the gable. And I used to love the fact that I could hear their song in the morning because my bedroom was just next door to it. I could hear them sing and he could hear them flutter back and forward. 
and the thought that somebody had made their home, some animal, some bird. Of course, over the years, the house got tidied up and rebuilt and redeveloped, and my dad whitewashed the wall, and after he whitewashed the wall below the swallows at the house martin's nest, well, they weren't so welcome after that. <laughs> and uh, each spring, he'd go out with a long pole, and as they began to build, he would poke away the nest. And I felt heartbroken by that because their presence wasn't there anymore. Their song wasn't heard anymore. For me, the swallow's nest in this story, in this psalm, represents the smallest, and has always for me rep represented the smallest and the most humble presence in worship. It could be any of us, it could be anyone, but they are welcome here in this space. But over the years and recently, I've started to notice that I read this psalm slightly differently. And I realize that every creature has its own song of worship. Every creature has its own praise and presence of God. In a year when Glasgow is welcoming people from all over the world to come and discuss how to combat climate change, in COP26, the Congress of Peoples, Congress of Parties. What better reminder that every creature sings God's praise. Those who are here, we find God's presence when we sing His praise, when we worship. We find God's presence when we worship here together. And we have done over the years, and we can again, each Sunday and each time we gather. And we find God's presence at home when we worship, when we harmonize our voices with the whole of creation. So the first image is a nest, a tiny detail in the house of God. The second image is more complicated. Eugene Peterson, he says in his translation, How blessed we are when our lives, when our lives are the full of God, when our lives become the road upon which God travels. If verse 3, with its vivid image of the nest, challenges our human centered view of life, where we are at the heart of everything, here in verse 5 is an even more, even greater challenge. The road of our lives, our journey's road, our pilgrim road, is not the focus. The focus is God making His road through us, through what we do, through who we are, in our everyday experience. You and I can become participants in God's work. In God's mission into the world. I think it's so important that we have a clear idea of what God's mission, God's purpose in the world looks like. In a world where so many of the images we have seen over the last few weeks have been images of people bringing their vision into the world into being carrying guns, carrying weapons, soldiers and fighters looking strong and purposeful. What does it mean to bring God's presence into the world through our lives becoming a road for Him? Of course, our example is going to be Christ. Christ whose words, whose very life brought the presence of God into our hearts and into our existence. Christ who said, I come with good news to the poor. Christ who said that he came to bring healing to the sick. Christ who said that he came to bring goodness into the world, to bring a sword of justice, a word of peace. What does it mean to be this? 
We have an art piece in um, St Mary's Episcopal Cathedral in Edinburgh at the moment. It's part of a project we call Peacemakers, which began as a giant seven foot in diameter French knitting loom in Renfield St Stephen's, now called St Andrew's West in Glasgow in the city centre. And we opened the door of the church and people came in and they knitted on this French knitting loom with volunteers for three and a half years. Well, they didn't all stay for three and a half years. But some did three stitches and some stitched for hours. And out of this produced two things. One was a seven and a half meter long textile piece of every stitch you could imagine, made of donated yarn over three and a half years. And the other thing that grew was a practice, a practice of listening. As we stitched beside people, we listened to their stories. We could spend hours listening to their stories. And one of the most amazing things was just listening and hearing them speak to themselves through the telling of their own story. And the miraculous realization that sometimes we could hear God speaking to them in their own voice as they told their story and reflected on where they were, we could hear and they could hear that God was making his road in his life, in their lives. Well, the piece we have in St. Mary's is not a participative piece in Edinburgh. It's the laying out of the long um, seven and a half meter of knitted, knitted textile with the peacemaker's loom lying in its side. And we were there laying it out and taking photographs so it could go on Gardner and Gardner's Instagram posts. And you'll find, I'm a wee plug so you could find it there. But as we stood beside it, the same thing began to happen as when we were with the loom. Visitors came up to talk to us and we listened. We listened and we could hear again God making his road through people's lives, through their own reflection on their lives. And we realized that simply by being there and by opening ourselves up to the presence of God, we noticed and realized that God was present. It felt almost accidental. It felt completely surprising but also felt true that God was present there in the everyday moment. Those who paint icons, those amazing, skilled, deeply thoughtful craftsmen and women, these artists, they have a discipline of icon painting that begins in prayer. They pray before they even go to the easel. They pray before they put the wood together to make the backdrop. They pray before they mix their paints and their colors. And they allow the presence of God to be in every single moment of their work. It may take months to make one single painting, but each day begins the same with a prayer and opening up of their lives to God so that in their creativity, God is present. And people meet God as they reflect when they see the work they have made. That discipline is not just for icon painters. It's for all of us to recognize and to allow and to give freedom to God in every moment of our lives to make his road through us. God's presence is found in the place where we worship, in the time when we worship, as we feel sheltered in the nest of God's presence. But God's presence is also found and located in the familiar and constant moments of our lives when we become the road through our actions and our work of God's presence in the world. two locations that we are part of. 
if every single experience we have is physical and a place in the world and a time so we can remember them that these two locations are really important so that not just when we gather also when we go out from here or go out from our homes and let God make his road through everything we do everything so when you find yourself at work this week let God make his road where you work when you find yourselves in conversation with others this week let God make his road where you are wherever you find yourself at home at work at school let God make his road so the presence of God fills this world not just in the place of worship but in the place of life Christ came not to draw the world into church Christ came and sent the church to go out into the world that it might be transformed into a place of God's presence the church is no more than the people than us so let me invite you this week to let your lives be the presence of God in the world and let God make his road for as the psalmist says whatever God makes his road that's when springs of life grow in the desert that's when the brooks and the fresh rainfall brings life and strength and hope let your life be that this week for God will surprise you constantly whenever you let him make a road through you or I through me. Amen.